Hey there, everybody. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how to make this breakout room experience even better uh, so that we have more people participating, so you feel comfortable participating, uh, whether you know the answer, whether you don't know the answer. So let's get into it. So the first thing to decide is whether to go into the breakout room uh, at all. And I will, of course, encourage you to go into those breakout rooms, participate in those discussions. They're great for learning. They're great for seeing how other people are thinking about a, a problem. They're great for making mistakes in a small group environment. Uh, and at the same time, it's your choice whether you go into that or not. So if you're having a day uh, or a semester where you want to work uh, more individually, um, you just want the quiet, that, that's all good too. Totally your choice. So if you've decided to enter a room, here's what I recommend. I invite you to consider connecting with the group uh, when you enter. Whether you're going to be an active participant or not, I think this is the, probably the most important part. And for you, that may be unmuting and turning on your video. It may be just saying hi in the chat. So I would ask that if you're not going to be an active participant, that you let the people in the group know that. Uh, a little bit like if we were you know, walking into a room and, and you walked into a group and just sort of stared at people as you walked in. But, you know, normally when we're in person, we come in and like, hey, and if you don't want to, you know, participate, you just kind of stay quiet and that's, that's all good. Or you might say, you know, I'm, you know, pass, I'm not sure or whatever yet. Uh, but just let, let people know so that you, 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 you know you're in there. Um, that said too, so respecting each person's chosen way of participating. We'll have different ways of doing this. This is going to change throughout the semester. Um, it's all good, whatever you decide. Uh, the other thing, so on my end, I'll assign a facilitator to try to help things out a little bit as well. Um, and so if you're the assigned facilitator, uh, again, it's your choice. So I might even jump to that last part right here. If you don't want to facilitate, no problem. You can ask somebody else. And I'd recommend asking somebody specific. So um, if Josie is in the room, I would say, hey, Josie, are you up for facilitating? I'm not up for it today. Um, if she's not, you can ask somebody, somebody else. But if you're the assigned facilitator, go for it. Doesn't mean you have all the answers. What it does mean is that you invite participation, you encourage both oral and chat participations, um, and, and you think about what to do if your group gets stuck or if somebody is stuck. Okay, sometimes you might have to say, you've made some great comments, thank you very much for that, let's hear from somebody else now. Um, and that's part of your job as a facilitator. Okay, let's look at some specifics. Getting started on a question. You might want to start just by restating the question, making sure everyone's on the same page, make sure everybody has the question in front of them. Start by just saying, what you what do you see? Okay, here's what I'm seeing in this question. Um, here are the different features. Here are the different ideas. Then you might get into what the possible starting points and solving a problem uh, are. And I would encourage you here to write down all of the ideas, right and wrong. And in fact, even try to get out some of the wrong ideas. It's like, oh yeah, this is looking really good, but let's pull some other things out. What might not be a, a good starting point here? Write those down so we get comfortable being right and wrong. Okay, then you can start narrowing things down, eliminating the things that don't work out, going toward those better ideas. Okay, so what if you're the person who's stuck and confused but the others seem to be understanding what's going on. Well, you could say, I don't know this, or I don't understand what's going on. Could you explain that to me? And I know it can feel really uncomfortable to say that. I have been in that situation. I'm often in that situation. Um, I've seen our top researchers at universities, presidents, um, CEOs in a meeting saying, I don't get it. Can you help me out here? And it's the most powerful thing I think that you can learn to do is, is not pretend that you understand, not try to fake it, but just, you know, if it's important for you to learn, to for you, if it's important, um, say that you don't understand, that's okay. You might say, can you walk me through how you got started on that question? Walk me through your thinking on the starting point. Um, can you walk us through, can you walk me through how you came to that decision? Those are different ways of saying, um, you know, I want to see your thinking on this. I didn't have the same kind of thinking or I just really didn't get it, um, but using some different words. And then finally, if everybody in the room is stuck, you really don't know what, you know, what to do first, that's fine too. That's going to happen. Um, you might start by writing down what you do see, what you observe. You could write down maybe some options, try to brainstorm some ideas there. Uh, you can call for help. So that call for help button uh, sends a message uh, to me if I'm the professor in the course or to one of the teaching assistants uh, that somebody in you know, room six is calling for you. Uh, so we can pop in and help out there. 
Uh, you can also return to an earlier question and, and use that as a model to figure out what to do for our next kind of idea. So those are some ideas to get started. Help us make those breakout rooms uh, even better. And I look forward to seeing you back in class.